I'm on a meander around the world, uh, what started off as a ride around the world. That meander started on the August 27th, 2022. I think I'm going to ride around the world, literally. <laughs> Today would have been day 270 something. A lot has changed, a lot is different, but kind of the, the motivations behind it are still the same. Cycling around the world, starting and finishing at the track, and fundraising for Mind. I was pretty naive back then of what it would look like, how long it would take me. Um, eight months would be eight months would be very leisurely. Seven would be kind of about right. What what I'd need? You said a shovel in there. Oh yeah. Uh, what are you going to be shoveling? Burying my shit. <laughs> Is it actually? Yeah. I don't think I've completely changed. You know, it's just I've kind of grown more into myself um, and found out who, who that person is in those nine months. And now, how long have you been in Malaysia? Uh, about three, three months. Yeah, since Fe February 22nd is when my, my first visa was. That's when I left Thailand. Yeah, so I, I took some time off uh, the road and stopped in KL for a bit. I should have been back a month ago. If all, if all went to plan. Eight months was the, the number that I told myself. And here we are nine months in and there's still a long way to go. It's roughly halfway, or when I stopped, it was roughly halfway through the planned amount of distance, which was 34,000 K. It was about 17,000 K when I first arrived in Malaysia. And I was loving being on the bike. And I wanted to keep that feeling, right? So I thought to myself, if I'm gonna stop at any point, it's got to be when I'm loving the riding, because then I'll be so excited to start riding again and get back on the road. If I stopped when I was feeling really bad, then that, that, would, be the, that would be the lasting impression of the last section of riding that I had. It was, ah, oh, that, that was really bad. I'm not really looking forward to getting back to riding. And that would be much more difficult. So I thought, stop when you're feeling great, take some time off, and then just be so ready to hit the road again and, and love it. Um, and that's, that's what we're doing. It's gonna be a new, new set of wheels from, from these. That takes me a very long way, <laughs> about 20,000 K. It feels like I'm riding on a like ice rink because everything feels so like slippery and smooth. Oh man, start ride, yes please. Ready for Sabah. I can't wait. So we've got about two weeks to ride around Sabah in yeah, the northern part of, of the island of Borneo. It's uh, hot. Yeah, very hot. And much more hilly than Peninsular Malaysia. Oh. Penang Hill was steeper. On Penang Hill, my wife said 37% at one point, but I didn't have a bike. That weighs 40 kilograms. First climb that's cracked me. Not enough water, too long to go. <laughs> I think we're about 200 meters up and there's another 400 in about. 2k, 2.3k. So we're gonna go down and get some water. 
because it's about 35, 36 degrees. Yeah, so my, my mentality around like getting to what place at what time is now so much more relaxed than it was getting through Europe and, and in Turkey. You know, before it was very much, have to be here, have to be there, have to get this place. You know, in Europe I had to, right, because I was, I was meeting you on a, on a set date. So you, you have to be at a place at, at a time. I went into India with that mentality as well, and, and that's where it changed. India, you know, India was pretty tough. I'm so far from home. I feel pretty intimidated and stressed out because of the route that I set myself across India. It just meant that I really, yeah, really, really struggled like for the first week and a half, two weeks of India. Uh, maybe on par with the Bosnian thunderstorm. I have some videos, but really like, I, I don't have much from that time because I was really, panicking about like, oh my god, this is this is how I've decided to, to do this round the world ride. And I was like, you know, I can honestly say that I really actually hated that first, uh, that first 10 days or so. So I drove a big chunk of it um, so that I could take the second half of it a lot more relaxed. You know, having the freedom to stop if you want to stop or take a day off if you want to take a day off. Uh, and that's really where that mentality switched. about you know how many selfies I took in India. They they just love it. They love it. We're heading into quite a remote section. Um, won't be, won't be much signal. Still, probably be places to eat um, and things to get. But yeah, it's going to be a big day, um, which we should get done pretty early. In terms of like learning the language of a country you're in, for me, it means that I can engage a lot more with with places. You know, I do a little bit of Malay every morning, but this morning I was way behind. But that's because I'm, I'm there on Ling, on my phone, and I have a little book. Like if I hear a new word, I write it down. You're sometimes in places that are very small, and you know, all through Southeast Asia, people have really appreciated it, or they're like kind of surprised when, when you say something in, in their language. Beli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, what's Beli? Donut tampon? Yeah, Dora Kampung, perfect, sit up. Uh, Apa ni? Uh, ini kui champion. Champion. Ah, champion, ataupun tompok, inti kacang hitam. Boleh kita beli... Uh, boleh, boleh, boleh. Tiga, tiga Dora Kampung. <laughs> uh, Mau harga berapa ringgit? Dan satu... Uh, yeah. Satu biji? Uh, ah, yeah, ya, yeah, biji. Yeah, kita, minum. Kita minum sekarang. Ah, minum uh, sekarang. <laughs> She gets a massive kick out of speaking the little bit of English she knows to me and I get a huge kick out of speaking the little bit of Malay that I know to her. So it's this like exchange where everyone's just so excited to be able to talk to each other in, uh, in each other's language and it completely breaks down that barrier that would be there otherwise. I, like, I could just like chill there all day and just chat and laugh and eat donuts and drink tea. <laughs> You know, as soon as I got to Vietnam, I did start, like, I learnt the, the things that are basic and useful to me. 
you know, there's this like set list of things that are like, okay, if you know those, then you can like be a respectful person when you're there and, and at least put some effort in, into it. We're, we're both very fortunate to be able to speak, you know, the language which is the most spoken language in the world is our first language. You know, it's, it's all very yeah, fortunate and very, very privileged position to, to be in. I think it's not taking any of that for granted um, and becoming lazy as, as a result of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, ready? Okay, okay yeah, say cheese. One, cheese. two, three. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that could be a good spot. There must be monkeys up in that tree. See, they're all shaking. Lovely little spot. One of the best spots was still Cappadocia. That was just like, that was just the spot. Uh, I've had some really nice beaches as well. Some super nice beaches in, in Malaysia on the west coast in uh, Terengganu and uh, Kelantan. Super nice over there. <laughs> family feud on the other side of the riverbank. <laughs> now I'm gonna leave my rain fly. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. Um, Cause shit's gonna be so hot. I leave this right by the door. <laughs> and then if it starts raining and I feel it, then I'll jump out and throw it on in the night. I, I've never felt as beautiful as I did in, in Vietnam. <laughs> so so many grandmas. Wow, so handsome, so handsome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, as, as soon as I left Hanoi, I was heading straight for mountains and just climbing, climbing, climbing. <laughs> These guys invited me over and before I know it, I'm like 12 shots deep in Hai's homemade uh, rice wine. Tôi tên là Hoàng. Hôm nay được gặp Kuro. There was one section where I tried to do a border run. It rained for about five days. It's just like a mud sludge. Well, they wouldn't let me leave without a visa for Lao already. So I had to go down that massive climb that was like sludgy, stony, disgusting. Uh, my lights stopped working, uh, something broke on the bike, the battery ran out on my rear derailleur. That was a, that was a funny night. Oh man, this is absolutely wild cycling into this city. In 150 meters, turn right. Merry Christmas! Obviously I've been away long enough now that I had uh, Christmas in Vietnam. I had New Year's in Cambodia. I had Chinese New Year's in Bangkok. And I had my birthday here in Malaysia. The days obviously have a different meaning when you're away from home, but really those, those days were all amazing. New Year's in Cambodia. That, that was a really nice time. I did Ho Chi Minh City to Phnom Penh in one day. I think it's about 280k. The vet's WhatsApp group of Hern Hill Velodrome kindly said, uh, yeah, it's like Christmas, New Year's time. Um, kind of a nice uh, collection from them. So I could go somewhere, somewhere nice on Kukurong Salam in um, Cambodia. Cambodia, uh, it's flat and it's really hot. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Went to CM Reap. Again, meant to stay there like two days, three, <laughs> and four, and five. Do 
I send you that video of what my chain looked like? Yeah. It's like you've never seen a chain. Every mechanic I've showed that video to has just gone like, huh? They've never seen that before either. Wow. That is destroyed. I kind of was really sad to leave Cambodia and I told myself, all right, I just have to get away as quickly as possible because if, if I don't, I'm, just, I'm literally just gonna turn around and head back. I think it's about 150K from there to the border and then, and then got the train into Bangkok. We're a couple of days on from camping at the river now. And now we're about to start climbing. Um, some today, but most of it will be tomorrow. This is Pit Pisang. Apeni? This one. Sawala. Sawala. I was saying she said uh, Hati Hati, which is my favourite uh, favorite phrase. It means safe journey. Yeah, Hati by itself is hard. Two of it, if you repeat it, it means safe journey. If you say uh, Hati Bike, it means like, yeah, like a good, good person, kind person. But yeah, it's, it's my favourite phrase. They take a lot of pride over their truck horns. And it's a bit weird when it's like you're on a quiet road and then suddenly halt. <laughs> There's a tiny, it's not an amp, but like a tiny mic or something like that. Yeah, they're, they're biting me. We, we need to find somewhere to wash our kit properly. a big crowd, so we've come over. What a strange event to come across. <laughs> They're having some weird ones. You just chance it. When I was in Vietnam, I rode past a, uh, a bird song competition slash auction, and then it happened again in Thailand. Actually, I rode past another one. They're, they're super fun, because it's just bird song. This is a this is a bit uh, a bit more hardcore. <laughs> We've had a little break to fill some time, sipping on copy ping, munching on the uh, on the roti, and now we've got a uh, a climb that takes us up about another 500 meters. A day always comes together. You don't need to plan it at the start. It just Everything will work out, and if it doesn't, you got a tent. Pitch up somewhere, sleep and go again. Yeah, wow. Only two of you? Yeah, just the two Where of us. Where from? Uh, the Thang Daddy, uh, London. London! Yeah, So I see letting out cut Malaysia and took Tiga Bulan. Wow, so Tapi now you can on, speak yeah. Malay? Touring Sabah yeah. using yeah. bicycle. Exactly. Amazing. <laughs> right? It all works out in the end. This is the best feeling when everything everything comes together after a long day. Should we go here? Should we go there? We've got our own little own little spot. Yeah, I think I think stopping for a while 
in you know in, in one place yeah of course it made me you know miss being on the road and trying to figure things out on the fly uh, and what's going to happen and where you're going to eat and where you're going to sleep and where you're going to get to and then things get really difficult and then things get really good um, and everything comes back around I was both trying to convince myself to go back to Cambodia and convince myself not to go back. Um, so in the end I decided, look, just, just, just ride, continue with what you have to do, um, which is ride around the world. And that's what I did. Time to leave this city and just, yeah, tick off some, uh, some kilometers. It made Thailand a bit more of like a transition country. I decided not to go up to the north, which is like, you know, the best place to go if you want cycling because I was so excited to get to Malaysia. I was so sad to leave Cambodia that it was like, okay, let me just like link up these two places as quickly as possible. And when I was in that space, I just like completely removed myself from the, the world around me. I was like, no, it's just about riding. It's just about, you know, getting through Thailand. Um, you know, probably quite similar to how the beginning of India was going. And, and yeah, it was Dodd that, uh, yeah, showed me so, so much kindness. Really great guy, really funny. Kind of reminded me of how, uh, how I should have been riding and what I knew, but I kind of lost my way with a little bit. That was going very well, and then I got dengue. These really weird spots, like all over my leg, that are just getting like worse and worse throughout the day today. Tried to ride, got about 3k, um, and had to lie down for about an hour and a half. Um, for me, it was worse than COVID, and I had to move somewhere because I had to take some days off. Had to move somewhere that was, you know, cheaper to to stay at. It, it's quite scary to be that ill by yourself on the other side of the world, not knowing what it is you're ill with and not knowing what to do. As soon as I had my health back, you know, I was like, oh, you know, it's time. I've literally hardly eaten over last week. I got, and my appetite came back yesterday. And oh my God, it's like I've just got like permanent munchies. Everything just looks so good and I want to eat everything. That made arriving in Malaysia so good. I reckon I can get to Malaysia today. Maybe. Woo! Oh, I'm so gassed to be in Malaysia. I know like nothing about this country and I've been so excited since I left London to get here. It's so steep. It, oh my god, it just goes up. What a morning! What a beautiful, beautiful morning. And then made it down to Penang. And there's one thing that you do in Penang, and that's eat well. Met some more friends there. What do you eat? What means? Nasi lemak. Nasi lemak. Sangat sedap. So good. So good. You can, tell, you can tell we're getting pretty high up because we have pine trees in Malaysia. <laughs> what a day! There is something in those seven days croissants that, oh my god, I'm flying! I won't, I, won't, I won't upset my friends in, in other countries by, by saying Malaysia is my favourite, but <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Today we climb up to uh, Kundasang, which really is not far as the crow flies. It's about like 20k, but uh, yeah, we get quite high in that time up to about 2,000 meters. 
Oh, it's like orange underneath. That would hurt. <laughs> I knew when I left London that there was nothing that I had to be back for. There's things that I wanted to be back for, but didn't need to. You know, seeing friends and family that, that I miss. Um, and, I, and I miss a lot. And so that's always been on the back of my mind. You don't spend much when you're like traveling by bike, you know, and that's also been helped out by, you know, by a lot of people that might say, like, let you stay somewhere. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, yeah, like ext extending the, the time I can be away. Now, now I've uh, started some work again. So I've started coaching um, some, some riders again, more, you know, one-to-one -one di directly with riders. Because um, the way I've been traveling without working, it's not, it's like, you know, it's clearly not sustainable. So now I'm just actively looking at ways to be able to make it a way that I'm choosing to live my life. It, it really made me think of uh, India. Like, you know, when you're like low down, when I was up in Sikkim, low down, and then as it's getting higher, just this like grand, grand, grand mountain just like looming over in front of me. And here, or there, that was Kanchenjunga near Kinabali. 4,000 meters. What's scary is to think that Kanchenjunga, twice that height. I think I understand. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons that I left on this trip so quickly was because the, the thought of having the idea and thinking about it so much, the thought of regretting never doing that when I'd reached 30 or 40 or 50, you know, like, oh, like I, wish, I wish I did that when I was 23. You know, the, the fear of that feeling, you know, just spurred me to go and leave and do this. So yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that it, I'd, I'd rather regret doing it than regret not doing it. I, I said at the beginning of this, like, I can't begin to comprehend like, the journey that this is about to be. And I, can't, I still can't comprehend what's happened and everything that I've gone through and how that's just enriched you know, my, my time here. I've realized that everywhere has intrinsic worth whether that's the surroundings, whether that's the people, whether that's the food. And at some times, I haven't seen that in my own home. One of the backwards things about this is that it makes me want to go home and explore my home <laughs> even more. Like I've, I've seen more of Malaysia than I have of the UK. These experiences you can find everywhere. And so for some places I've gone past, that's some people's homes. You know, and you can really just step outside your door and find, find these experiences. and learn about yourself through pushing those boundaries wider and challenging yourself and stepping outside of your comfort zone because that's the only way that you're ever going to really, really grow. <laughs>